Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. Today we will be changing the clutch plate, pressure plate and the throw out bearing slash uh, concentric slave cylinder on my little Ford Band 1300 Rogue Cam. So let's get her up in the air. Always stay safe guys, make sure she can't roll away. And uh, let's get the front end in the air and uh, take it from there. Um, always make sure, don't leave a car on a jack, get yourself a pair of jack stands. Then we're taking off the wheels. Uh, it will just make it so much simpler, but you can do it with normal sockets and spanners as well. Okay, so uh, after taking off the wheels, we need to take off the axle nut. Now the ax axle nut, you uh, bend a, the edge of the nut in, so I just made a little tool out of a piece of rebar just to bend it back, so uh, we can get it off, otherwise that little edge that you uh, ran over with a uh, hammer and chisel uh, you battle to get it off so there we go now you should have well I should have taken off or loosened the axle nut with the wheel still on while the car was standing so this is a problem now that I need to put in a breaker bar so I just put on the nut put the nuts back on and then uh, took the strong handle and took it off like, like that works a job And then just take the nuts back off again. Probably not the way it should have been done, but that's how it went. Okay, next up we take off the uh, brake caliper. Just uh, remove the bolt, two bolts at the back. Uh, compress the brake caliper, brake caliper piston, and just put it to one side. If you've got a bungee cord, you can fix it up there, and then it stays in place. Um, now, after that, we remove the lower ball joint. Now this could be a, a bit of a tricky one, uh, once you get the bolt out, it's sometimes, if, especially if you haven't worked on it for a while, it sticks. This one actually came off fairly, fairly easy, um, didn't have a big fight with it, so luck on my side, yeah. And once that's done, you can just slip out the CV axle. There we go. Next up, we need to get the hanger bearing loose on the CV axle. I think it's two 13 millimeter nuts. Uh, how many extensions? All of them. Uh, didn't fight me too bad because I know, well, this is not the same. first time that I take out the CV axle, so I know where to, to fight for it. Uh, didn't, didn't go too bad. Once again, the uh, air tool is just making it a bit easier and faster. And then we're on to the left hand side of the uh, of the bucky. Uh, first of the axle nut, then just the two nuts that I used to lock it up so I can get it off once again. It should have happened while I was uh, while the car was on its on its wheels. Now we're just depressing the brake caliper. Be careful that you don't get three stitches. And then the brake caliper comes off. Next up is the brake disc. And then we take off the bottom ball joint. Uh, once again, uh, they didn't fight me too hard. I know it can be an absolute nightmare to get them off, but this time I was lucky. Uh, and then we can slip off the left hand CV axle. Now, getting it out of the gearbox, the left hand side has got a, a retaining ring on it. Uh, be careful, make sure that the oil's out by this time or we're going to have a massive mess. you see the oil still dripping on the other end. And there we're taking out the left hand CV axle. Make sure that you've got a new set of uh, seals, oil seals for it. Okay, so we have taken off the first uh, bolt on the starter motor. Now the second one comes off with the... Hose bracket for the radiator and then the top bolt comes off and there you can see the starter motor coming out now. I've just moved this to the side and completely take it out. But you can just uh, remove all the wiring and put it to one side. It's just going to be a bit of a mess. Uh, well, it's just going to take longer when once you're done. So I just let it hang there uh, right in place there. We're just taking off the uh, reverse sensor on the gearbox and then taking off the battery you need to remove the battery box otherwise you cannot get to everything so uh, might as well get it out of the way and, and done and, and uh, off of it Once 
Once the battery's out, we can uh, then remove the battery box. Uh, years and years of filth in there. There we go. Taking off all the cables. And there we go. Now we can get to the... Uh, engine mount now on the top side that is the hydraulic hose going to the uh, concentric safe slave cylinder taking taking out all those clips okay so last night it got a bit dark to film i took off the uh, gear selector the engine mount uh, and the uh, speedometer sensor uh, as well as the selector stabilizer there. So, and on the top end, on the top end we took off the hydraulic hose, uh, right on the side there, I think it's a reverse gear sensor, and some ground cables, so all that needs to be, that's still there, is there's another ground cable, but that'll come off once we start splitting the engine, and uh, I think that's that. So I think what I'm going to do next is I am going to start to take... Uh, jack up the engine so we've got it supported underneath and then we can start to remove the uh, hanger on this side but first I'm gonna take off these three bolts so that when we jack here yeah, it's not in the way Three hang uh, the three nuts on the engine hanger. Because it's very difficult getting some good video angles here. get this one back in there but was right. all right so as you can see the uh, I'll take it out but this uh, bearing is pretty much had enough of this life 
Let's have a look at the uh, clutch plate. Ach, at the yeah, clutch, uh, pressure plate just now. And this is all hydraulic fluid that leaked out here at the back somewhere. Get that out. There's a lot of gunk in here that has to come out. So I'm going to clean out that first of all. Uh, just stuck a little bit of a rag in the back end of the uh, CV axle. Oh, all well, the CV axle seal. Uh, just to prevent as much of this gunk from going into the gearbox itself. So I've got a can of brake parts cleaner. Let's see what we can do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and clean up most of this before we remove this seal because the uh, uh, concentric slave cylinder has got a seal onto the shaft so as long as that seal is intact we will not be getting any gunk into the gearbox which is what I'm aiming for. Okay, so now that we've got it fairly clean, we can uh, take off the uh, slave cylinder. Just got these three uh, little bolts here, size 8, 8mm eight socket. Come on. And here you can see this is the slave cylinder now. This is supposed to be spring loaded and should come out by itself. Oh. <laughs> okay, so the release bearing is gone. Now it's like totally froze up. So that's definitely the problem and it's leaking. So what should happen is, let me get the new one. Okay, so this is the old one. This is how I took it out. Uh, release bearing completely throw out bearing completely seized. This is what it should look like. So I can definitely say that's, that's our problem. Junk. There you can see how the pressure plate dug into this top section uh, during the last 300,000 kilometers. So good timer to replace it. So now I'm going to take off the clutch and pressure plate. Uh, there, was no, there isn't an issue with the clutch now, bar the slave cylinder, but having it open and the clutch having 300,000 kilometers on it, uh, I'm going to change the clutch and pressure plate as well. Okay, so now we can uh, take out the um, clutch and pressure plate. Uh, it's got two, four, six, it looks like. Two, four, six, 10 millimeter uh, bolts. So, eyes and ears. <laughs> and there we go. Now, there's no deep scratch marks on the flywheel, so that looks good. No serious hot spots, what we can do is we can. Just take a little bit of brake spot, brake spot cleaner, and wipe it off. Sure. Adding gear on the uh, flywheel looks good as well. Yeah, it was a little bit of heat at some stage, but not anything to write home about. And here's our old clutch plate. I'm gonna be honest with you. I think most people would think I'm lying when I say this clutch has got 300,000 Ks on it because it looks like it's still got a lot of life, life left in it. But, it's got the new one, let's put in the new one. The uh, old pressure plate, there's a bit of a groove in there. 
but also nothing major as you can see let's put in the new one oh and uh, check out the video in the little thing up here where i made the um, mud board that i used in this project as well works charm works a charm go and check the, out the bulb there okay so now we can start fitting the clutch again so you will see the clutch plate will either say uh flywheel side or in this case it's got a marking there gearbox side so but in essence you want the flat side come on so you guys can see there the flat side towards the flywheel so and then in most countries you get a little plastic uh, uh alignment to in if you're living in a third world shuttle they don't even give you a piece of plastic with it so get something that fits in quite nicely there and you can use that as an alignment tool in this case i've got a little uh, uh impact extension so we will be able to sort of get it fairly close to where it should be and then give a side and then we can align the pressure plate with the alignment holes and put the whole thing on there we go it, it won't go on all the way because your pressure plate spring is preventing it from going there so that and maybe your clutch as well uh, your clutch plate as well there we go so let me start aligning it And now we can insert the bolts again. So what you're going to do is you're going to get every all the bolts in, but do not start tightening them. So everything, as you can see, is still completely loose because we want to still center this. Okay, so you will see that the uh, clutch plate is still a bit loose in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tighten these to a point where the clutch plate can start sticking in. Probably going to be here now. You see now I can move the clutch plate and center it on the without it moving again. Just 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 getting the bolts to engage. Because once you start drawing down the pressure plate you want it to be to go down square with the uh, with the clutch plate so now there we go so it can still move around a bit now we need to center it up so well once you've got it centered i'm gonna eyeball this thing guys you'd be surprised how close you can get to something when you've got an eye when just by eye there we go i think that's about that the uh the other way you can go about it is once you if you feel there you're engaging everything now so play it around a bit you will feel that the moment you stick it out of direction you will immediately feel it so i think we are as close as it's going to get so what we will do now is we will talk down the uh, pressure plate uh, torque setting is 30 newton meters from the uh, from the workshop manual so what we'll do is we will firstly tighten it down and also always going in an opposite pattern one over the other And 
as you start depressing the uh, spring on the pressure plate you will see the little fingers going down Now what will happen is if you haven't got the clutch plate aligned with the center of the um, of the crank and what if you then put on your gearbox you will not be able to align the gearbox with the engine. So that's why it's very important to get this thing lined up properly because now that we've drawn down the um, pressure plate we won't be able to move the clutch plate in between anymore. And now we can talk about to 30 kilonewtons. So first up we clean the shaft. This one is not in a bad state, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give it a bit of a wire brush. All the gunk out of there. There's a little bit. You can see where the uh, clutch plate ran on it, but uh, it's not worn in any worse. Sometimes you get some gunk and rust and stuff in there, so just use a wire brush and get all of that out there. There we go. Once we're done, you can just clean it up with some brake pots cleaner again. Sure we've got everything off here. Here we go. And everything out of the seal at the back. You don't want any stuff sitting on that seal and making it leak and then you have to come back and strip the whole engine again just because something like a little piece of whatever was got stuck in there. There we go. The slave cylinder as previously mentioned has got its own release bearing in it. Do not depress it without oil in it. Uh, I've heard someone say that you can damage it so I'm not going to take a chance, I don't know how true it is, but uh, do not repress it with your hand before you've got oil on there. Firstly we'll take some wheel bearing grease and grease up the splines of the shaft. By the way, this is in the service manual as well. And then you'll see there's a little rubber lip seal there that rides on the edge here. So what I tend to do is I just want to give it a little bit. You don't want to damage a seal while putting something new back in to its place. That just, that'll just make sure that you ride on that seal. On some vehicles, there's actually a seal sitting inside the uh, slave cylinder. So what you want to check is if that is the case, in this case it's not so, but if that's the case uh, I'd like to wrap a little bit of uh, insulation tape, Toby tape, uh, around the shaft just to make sure you do not scratch the seal with the splines because there might be a sharp edge on the splines but in this case it's not. We do not have a seal in there so we'll just get that to sit on its place 
And now we can just put back the uh, bolts. Just get it to where it starts to seat on that uh, on that seal. And now you want to draw down onto the seal diagonally so you do not squish it out to the one side. And then the torque spec on this is from the service manual, 10 newton meters. And I think now we are ready to put this back onto the engine. Okay, so uh, let's see if we can get this uh, transmission back into the truck. Okay, so now that we've got everything together, we can start talking the bolts back on. Uh, bell housing mounting bolts is 44 Newton meters. And then the engine mount is 50 newton meters. Then we can put back the uh, gear selector stabilizer. And it gets torqued to 55 newton meters. If I can get the torque ring on here. So I've got to use a crow foot and a half inch to three eighths converter. And then I try and keep the uh, open ended of the crow foot parallel to the center line of the torque wrench in order to get as close to the same newtons times meters that, uh, that the torque wrench is, is uh, calibrated on. Here we go. Selector on. Now, what I've done is, last night when I took this off, I put two witness marks on here so that I can get it close to the, uh, as close to the original setting as possible. So I just line up the two, the two marks. And now we should be fairly close to Having a gear shifter that works again. Test it until we've got the hydraulic fluid in the in the clutch. Okay, so there we go. It will be a bit loose. Oh, there, there, I think there is. It's almost time for a new one over here. See how it goes. Right. Okay, so bell housing bolts. What was that? 44 newton meters. Engine mount 50 newton meters. Uh, selector stabilizer 55 newton meters that's all took up now we can st uh, oh one thing I'll stand the uh, speedometer sensor I've already turned it in by hand now I just need to make sure that it 
does not come out again. Be careful, it's a um, plastic thread on plastic thread. Don't cross thread it and do not over tighten it. Okay, so now I think everything is done underneath here. Now we need to jack up the transmission again to do the top bolts. back in and now we can tighten the engine mount they are here's one and there's one and then there's one just out of screen and they get tightened to I think 59 okay so uh, before we tighten the top engine mount uh, let's get the TV axles back uh, I put a little bit of grease on the seal surfaces just gonna chuck her back in uh, you'll see the right hand side CV axle has not got a retaining ring because we've got the uh, hanger bearing so it won't pull out because it's held in by the hanger bearing the other side's got the little ring I'll show you once we get there but uh, let's chuck it back in what I'm going to do is I am going to put a bit of copper slip on this side just to make sure we get it off the next time Set. I will torque this nut back on once we've got the car back on the ground. Uh, just makes it easier, otherwise, the engine just spins. Just gonna put it there, finger tight. Let's go. The brake caliper bolt, I'm just gonna put a little bit of Loctite on. So, uh, let's start both our, so let's start both our CV axles are back in. We haven't talked the axle nut in front, but we've talked the ball joint 55 Newtons. 50 newtons on the brake caliper if I'm not mistaken and that's that getting back this one is in seals in seals greased uh, right hand side right hand side we've greased the seal to get it to slip in the uh, hanger bearings um, talked up to 25 newton meters Hanger bearings talked up to 25 newton meters. Selectors on. Engine mount, 50 newton meters on these three bolts. There's one up there, 55 on the stabilizer. Uh, right hand axle in, same story. Ball joint on. Brake calipers back. I haven't talked down the um, axle nut yet. That will do once with the car standing on his own wheels. Uh, reverse sensor. Reverse sensor in. Start a start a start a motor in. Uh, bolt stock to 35 newton meters. And uh, yeah, I think that's that. The rest we'll do once we get uh, back on the wheels.
Okay. So uh, now that we've got the uh, car standing back on its wheel, we need to uh, torque the stub axle nut to 290 newton meters. That is a absolute shitload. And set the uh, little anti dunk up loose thing. And go blue wheel nuts to 85 newton meters. Also in a diagonal pattern. Okay, and now we can finally uh, talk the... Oh, what's happening here? Talk the uh, transmission mount to 69 Newton meters. Box. Okay, so and the budget battery box both 25 newton meters, but I guess you could just tighten them up. And when working like this, you see I just put on the batteries. I'm not worried about a hydrogen gas explosion, uh, winds blowing chances of building up enough hydrogen is absolutely zero and I think this is a sealed battery as well so okay so uh, to fill the transmission you need a 8 millimeter X and then you just take out that plug full plug over there and uh, I use a funnel with a piece of silicone tubing on it so that you can get it in there there we go let's go up top and fill it what you do is you put a drop tray underneath and fill it till about five millimeters before it starts running out so normally it'll just fill it till it runs out and it'll be okay this gearbox should take about 2.8 liters if I'm not mistaken here you can see I overfilled it a little bit but it's not done guys Take note, your car should not stand on jacks when doing this, otherwise you'll overfill it because it's leaning backwards. If it's still overfilled, it'll blow out on the back of the uh, speedo sensor. I've had that before as well. Because I had it jacked up when I filled it the previous time. And it was replacing the uh, Drive shaft seal, and then for about a week afterwards, it leaked well all over the place. There we go.
Oh, I see one thin thing left. We need to fully. Okay, so one thing remaining, we need to fill the brake fluid up, slash hydraulic fluid up, and bleed out the air and see if this car will drive. I'm gonna leave this open. Uh, it'll you brake fluid will drop down as we bleed it through and also we compress the calipers of the brakes so that'll have to kick out again and uh, occupy some volume as well okay so we've got everything buttoned up the air bled out of the hydraulic she's running like she should uh, i think everything's ready now just a quick wash down and we'll be ready to go again uh if this helped you out if you want to do something like this on your own bantam i hope this uh this is uh, fairly informative, I tried to get everything picked up where I could uh, and if you've made it thus far in the video, thank you very much as always, uh, please rate, comment, subscribe and then as always, stay safe